Hi from me, Romy Stach, and welcome to Derek Eretz, The Way of the World. In today's show, Ray Perkle explores music within Judaism. We reflect on the life of opera singer Aviva Pelham and meet with Danny Kay, one of the founding members of Shout. In an interview, Lord Rabbi Jonathan Sachs said that the history of the Jewish spirit is written in its songs. The words do not change, but each generation needs its own melodies. Rabbi Sachs adds, our generation needs new songs so that we too can sing joyously to God as our ancestors did at that moment of transfiguration when they crossed the Red Sea and emerged on the other side, free at last. Ray Perkle elaborates further. For me, what's special about music is the relationship that we can discern and we can experience between two things, between the individual parts and the whole that those parts make up. Rabbi Jonathan Sachs said a very beautiful point about music is that when we experience a melody, uh, if you freeze that melody in time, you're focusing your attention on one note, but that's not a melody. The, the beauty about that note is the relationship that it has with the note that came before it and the relationship that it has with the notes that come after it. Then you have a melody. The note on its own is not music. Music is that part in relationship to all the other parts. So that the, uh, the idea of a harmonious whole comprised of individual parts in beautiful, well-considered, uh, harmonious relationship with each other, that's the specialness about music. Now, music is something that features very prominently in Judaism. What's quite fascinating to see is, is that it's, you can actually um, detect the significance of music and the relevance of music right from the beginning of creation. The Hebrew word for in the beginning, which uh, the, the, the opening word of the book of Genesis, is the word bereshit. Now, if you rearrange the letters that spell bereshit, you can discern the presence of two other words, ta'ev shir, desire for song. The implication is, and this comes from one of the Hasidic Rebbe's, is that when God created the universe, his purpose in creating it was because he desired song. He wanted an entity, he wanted a existence, a universe to exist in harmony so that it sings as a harmonious whole. The notion of Derech Eretz, which is uh, typically translated, uh, paraphrased as, uh, as good behavior, uh, ethical behavior, I think a lot of people get fixated on me being a good person, me being a uh, behaving correctly. But I think what's far more important, um, and this is where the, uh, the model of music is so eloquent, is that it's about correct relationship. It's not about my perfection. It's about my impact, my contribution. Another idea that comes from music for me um, if you look at King David, uh, if you look at the very last of the collection of Psalms in the book of Psalms, Psalm 150, you'll notice a list of musical instruments. But what's fascinating about that list of musical instruments is there's a horn, there's flutes, there's stringed instruments, there's percussion instruments. Right in the middle of that list of instruments is something called a machol in Hebrew. So what's a machol? A machol is the Hebrew word for a circular dance. Everybody knows that Jews dance in circles. So wait a second. That doesn't make sense. What's, what's, a, what's a dance doing amongst a list of musical instruments? For me, the lesson is very beautiful. The response to the music is also an instrument. In other words, <clears throat> we're talking again about relationship, about impact. Whatever we do um, is, is about enhancing the experience of the world around us, of, of others around us. 
And that's what we were expected. That's what God created us to be. In a career spanning almost 40 years, Aviva Pelham's dynamism and versatility have made her one of South Africa's most popular singers. Born into a musical family, Aviva has enchanted her audiences, brightened stages and spread the love of song both in South Africa and abroad. Aviva continues to communicate and cross boundaries, sharing her own particular brand of dynamic entertainment. I was born in Salisbury, Rhodesia, the third of three daughters, to two people who didn't know each other before they got married. And I often thought to myself, what was it about these two people that helped them make it work? The one is that they were both Jewish and the Jews had just been through the most terrible times. And the second is that they were both musical. And I think with those two major uh, important factors coming into the lives of their children, it, it gave us the most wonderfully warm home uh, with a lot of love. And I feel very privileged that I was brought up in that atmosphere. And from a Jewish point of view, there's no doubt that the, the Yiddishkeit played a huge part in our home life. Well, I mean, if you think about music, uh, music in the Bible goes back thousands and thousands of years, and it's there always to mark every single occasion. Every milestone in everybody's life, uh, wars and celebrations, and uh, the Jewish people also do that. Um, we also had enormous celebration in our home through the music, and it was often because of the traditional part of the Jewish religion. Um, I feel it was enormously important in our upbringing. Growing up in a musical home was, it was a bit of a privilege actually. I have to say, um, my mom would wake me up in the morning opening the curtains and singing a good morning song <laughs> that would kick us off and there was the lullaby before bed. In situations of great joy, we find a way everyone will come together and sing um, at Shabbos meals. And yeah, it's just something I find when I find other families who don't do it, I think it's a bit strange and I feel quite sorry for them. <laughs> Because there was so much music in the home, I don't think I was thought of as in the least bit special, certainly not by myself. And when I came to university in Cape Town and study um, opera, which was for me the culmination of everything that I loved. And I couldn't believe my luck that I had the opportunity and that they accepted me. And I worked extremely hard trying to better my own technique and voice so that I would be good enough to serve the music of geniuses. And that's how I still feel. So now I'm at a stage that I'm thinking, and what can I do to pass this on to people who didn't have my opportunities? My parents didn't have my opportunities and nor did so many millions of people in the world. But I live in South Africa, I have strong South African roots, and I feel one of my um, well, responsibilities, but I want to, I so, so badly want to do this, is to try and give back as much as I can. And I think we are such a rich nation when each one of us can shine their light and then together nothing is stronger. I met Aviva in 2011 when I was doing my first year at the University of Cape Town and she got to be uh, my lecturer who was giving me English diction and a little bit of singer's theatre. She walked in and we knew a diva was in the room. Posture, upright, proper English, you know, everything about her was just like, I want to be like that woman one day. My role is more in terms of mentorship. When somebody comes to me, I listen carefully and I think, what is it that this person needs? And um, I really try to facilitate some way to take them to the next level. And I find I'm, I'm I love being involved in improving other people's lives. When you're a singer, you always think about the voice, the singing, is, does it sound right? But you never actually care 
whether people get the message because music is all about the message. So it was quite an important thing that I learned from her that the words are the most important, so they must be transported to the people. And then in the singer's theater, we did um, a little bit of acting as well, how to carry yourself on stage, how to move, you know, how to open up to your audience and things like that. And those are the most important things that an opera singer needs, you know, to be able to be on stage and deliver. Well, I work a lot in outreach and I found that I was coming across wonderful talent and I would shape something, perhaps a choir, and I've really worked with many. And I'll, I'll work with people and then think to myself, but this is worth hearing, you know. And so I started quite a long time ago using my own platforms to showcase young talent. If it was just a group of singers, I would call it Viva the Voices. I like that title because I'm Viva, Italian for Viva, long live, and of course, South Africa Viva. So it just feels right, Viva, Viva the Voices. Um, and then I found I was doing lots of other projects as well. I got lots of children from different places in the Western Cape on different instruments, and I showcased them at the Baxter twice on Youth Day to teach the instruments of the orchestra to children played by children. And before long, I found myself doing this a lot. She is professional. You keep time, you come, you know your work. Because when you go on stage, you expose yourself naked to the world. And the world must then come back and look at you and judge you. So I would really, really like to follow her steps in that sense of being a professional at my work and being a humble and a caring person, always willing to help people and be there and be very supportive. I always use the same maxims to live my life by. I'm a lady and, and I'm a professional and I have integrity and respect and discipline and I respect my fellow people in this world and and I try my very best to do whatever I can to shine their light. I think that Derech Eretz means how we are in the rest of the world interacting with other people so that each of us can live our lives to the full but never disturbing or doing anything negative to anybody else. On the contrary, helping in any way to uplift and inspire their lives. For Danny Koppel, or Danny K as he is more popularly known, following a career in music was a post-school choice. While studying for a BA in Law and Political Science from Wits University, Danny Kay spent a large portion of his time writing songs and submitting them to record companies. The rest, as they say, is history, and today he is not only a successful musician, but has also taken his talent forward into helping others. I came from a family that really taught me about the importance of servicing not only your community, but you know, the community that surrounds surrounds you wherever you'd be in. Living in South Africa, you don't have to look far to find a cause to latch on to. So and I got the ability to really, you know, have a profile and a name to do something, bring in other musicians, raise money. I thought, well, here's my here's my chance, you know. I, I, I gotta I gotta use that currency in the right way. And I'd done a lot of work for other NGOs, but creating Shout really gave me uh, a legacy I felt and something that I could own and, and care for very deeply and uh, 10 years later uh, Shout's still around so that's great. Cabello and I had been friends in the music business pretty much from when I began in 1999-2000. In Cabello was part of the biggest quieto group in the country. He was already a huge star and you know we had a we had a very genuine friendship for many years before Shout began and we were peers and, and friends in the music business 
And um, I think I saw a kindred spirit in him, someone that cared for the same things that I cared for, that had the same principles, the same drive, ambition, and shout couldn't have been shout without him. I started out in the music business in 1996, and around 99, I changed record labels, and uh, I remember meeting this, uh, this young, impressionable white boy who was really, really talented at what he did. Uh, and what, what, what drew me to Danny was actually his uh, talent in, 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 in songwriting and singing. And I guess through the music was when the bond began. Shout began after the murder of um, the musician Lucky Dube, who was a world-renowned figure. And when I, you know, I heard the news of his murder, uh, I guess it was just a tipping point with me. I thought, okay, what are we going to do? I turned to the most natural thing for me to do, which was music, creating a song, roping in the biggest influences on one singular anthemic track, which was a remake of the Tears for Fear song called Shout, uh, which many people know. And we formed this, we formed this NGO. The song did so well that soon afterwards we did our second one. And I think two years later, we did another one and we felt really strongly that it should be a South African song written by South Africans because this is a South African problem. And then we got Mikasa along with ourselves and a, a whole host of other musicians to come together to do another one. We didn't really know what we were going to achieve. I think we went into it very naively looking back, but we knew we would create a war cry. This would be a war cry to speak to South Africans, to try and just not only motivate them, but motivate us to get out there and do something. And sitting in you know, this building today, 10 years later, that came as a, that's come as a result of just that idea shows you the power of ideas, I think. And that if you just start something, um, you truly you know, you have no idea where they may lead. So uh, I'm a real big believer in, in the power of an idea. Mother Teresa said, he said, if you want to feed a thousand people, start by feeding one, you know? And, and I know that, and I believe that because sometimes the task at hand can be so mammoth. It can look so big, you think, oh, geez, you know, is downloading the song for 20 Rand really, really going to make a difference? I'm saying to you, it does. For Danny Kay, Lucky Dubé's untimely death was the last straw in the unrelenting impact of the crime epidemic in the country. He joined forces with fellow musician Cabello to establish Shout. They believe education goes a long way in preventing crime and have now taken the initiative to build libraries and primary schools throughout the country, sending out a message that we should all contribute to making a difference. The main focus of SHART uh, and the intention of SHART was to combat violence and crime and make South Africa a safer place, hence our tagline SHART for a safer South Africa. Um, and when we had raised some money we looked at you know, what, to do, what to do with it, how could we as an organisation effect some, some change. And for many years we would donate money to criminal rehabilitation. So we thought if we could rehabilitate offenders, we wouldn't have repeat offenders, that would reduce crime. But the more we really looked into the root causes of crime, we realized that most criminals are performing these acts due to desperation, a lack of opportunity. Maybe as a kid, they never graduated high school, so they have no opportunity to employ themselves. They have no opportunity to raise uh, money for their families or themselves. So we dialed it back to the real early, early stages, which is kids and reading and writing and numeracy. 
and giving kids an opportunity to change the trajectory of their lives from a very early age. So we went on this, um, this drive to build libraries across the country in schools that really needed them. And like the Carter School in Alexander that we're sitting in today, it's a school that really needed it. And you know, hundreds of kids and thousands of kids are going through our libraries every year. And we've built five of them and uh, we'll, we'll build many more. The children are very much excited with this library because initially what happened was whenever we give them a homework to do at home and they have to get to the library, some of them did not have an access to these libraries, communal libraries, because of transport issues. Others are living far away from the libraries and others do not want to walk to the library because they are saying they are so scared because the library is far away from them. But after the establishment of this library, I saw that these kids were very much, and even now when they eat, they just want to eat next to the library and they are making it dirty. But I said to myself, I cannot just chase them away because they are saying to me, we want to get in and start reading the books. And I think it has, boosted our confidence as teachers to teach these kids because it is something that they have been yearning for yet they did not have an access to. And I, I think they are very much excited just to have this kind of a facility nearby and also within the schoolyard where they can just come and have a wonderful time reading the books. I think working with Madiba and, and seeing um, you know, seeing his, the, the, the way he worked with people, his care and, and, and love for, you know, for South Africans made an impression on me. The same way my parents made an impression on me as a young kid to, to care for my fellow South African. Um, and that was their path, their, you know, their, their Derek Eretz that set me on that, on that path. And I think it's evident to the fact that whatever I'm doing here, people are watching. Yeah. People are watching me the same way I watched my diva, the same way I watched my parents. So, um, Kabela and I speak about this often. We like, you know, you must, you must always, you must, you must never stop because you know people are, are watching you. And if we stop, um, we show them that, you know, maybe failure is an option or stopping is an option. So we're very driven by that sense of, of responsibility, by that sense of caring, that sense of community that you know, we've, put, we've put out there. So that is why you know, 10 years later, we're still here. So the impact you have on people, I think is, is, is massive and even more massive than you, than you realize. So yeah, you gotta go out there and, um, and do the best you can because you never know who's watching. Rebbe Nachman of Breslov said that music has a tremendous power to draw you to God. Get into the habit of always singing a tune. It'll give you a new life and send joy into your soul. We would love for you to join our conversation. So share your thoughts and stories on our Facebook page, Derek Eretz Connect. From me, Romy Stach, and the Derek Eretz team, we wish you a joyous week ahead. Remember, when the soul sings, the spirit soars.